So why are we here? Well, sex is what brings us together today. From the trauma and the triumph of reclaiming our sexual narrative, it comes with a lot of twists and turns. I myself am not here as an expert. I'm an expert in my story. I'm an expert in the things I've learned, uh, the wisdom I've cultivated, the thing that has uh, my name on it (laughs) and the letters behind my name. But I'm only an expert in my own story and how I got to this point and what made me start on this journey of reclamation, especially after sexual trauma and the work that I've done in the four years or so that sacral ground has existed why i started this journey was because i wanted to redefine what sex meant to me sex initially was something of curiosity i wanted to know why this person and this person were doing the things they were doing that evolved into I want to know more about this sensation and what causes that sensation. Yes, I've always been this nerdy. Yes, I've always been this specific about any detail that I'm interested in. Fight me. But it made me want to gain as much insight and and more than anything, put a definition or a word or a feeling onto the thing. Because for me, that made it real. That made it something to work towards and aspire towards my curiosity was a very beautiful thing and it continues to be a very beautiful thing but sometimes when beautiful things are put in the hands of ugly people within ugly set circumstances it can be a recipe for disaster i'm not ashamed of my story I have been accused of my story not being real because certain characters were not there when it happened. I've been accused because I was way too young for it to happen. But what happened to me, molestation, sexual assault, oral rape, and stealthing, are four horsemen that have taken so much from me have run rampant in my life, specifically my sex life. And that can be and is very difficult to pinpoint how it's affecting you and what to do to get over. So my personal story is someone who has those four quadrants and is working on healing from each one and discovering that healing from each one takes its own path. It's not something that I can approach quadrant two with the same energy with quadrant one. It's also not linear. I don't have to and... (laughs) It's shown that it's impossible to go in order. And they're always going to be there. Just like luggage and bills. They're always going to be there. It's how I adapt and evolve outside of them. That makes them less and less harmful to me as time goes on. So the reason we are here is we're rewriting our narratives. We are choosing to continue moving forward. We are choosing to go back when necessary and not feel shame because there was a trigger or we are unintentionally reliving a trauma and Ultimately, people approaching us and telling us that it's not that serious. We do what we do 
And you are here with me and I am here with you because I see you. I affirm you. I acknowledge you and tell you that what happened to you was real. It was not your fault. And you have every right to be mad and survive. However that looks. This podcast is for the survivors. However that looks. If you are listening to me right now and you're coming to the conclusion that you are a survivor, I welcome you here. It took me years to admit that I was a survivor because I had no idea that what happened to me was what it was. It took me three years to admit or even truly find out that stealthing is rape. And when I heard that, I did not initially want to believe it. A couple of years before that, learning about financial abuse, and emotional, mental, and verbal abuse, I hesitated to call myself a victim Therefore, a survivor, because I never knew that what happened to me was abuse. What happened to me actually caused a lot of the blockages that I have around safety and abandonment and being able to let go during solo sex, partner sex, any of those things. My body had refused to allow myself to feel any sort of pleasure because if I feel pleasure, that means I'm not tuned into my surroundings. I have to be aware at all times. And you can't be both. You can't give yourself over to the throes of pleasure while also being so wrapped up and attentive to what's happening to what's happening around you. You have to be one or the other. And even though my body has craved for years before the harm happened to me. That release, that reckless, willful abandon of being able to just allow myself to experience a thing, to jump off the cliff, knowing that I'm going to land safely. I'm going to land on my feet, but I want to know what it feels like to have the wind in my face that way. My body has craved that my whole life. And then these things happen that cause your body to lock down and cause you to look constantly for the doors and for escape routes and not allowing yourself any sort of freedom. Because what if this is your last moment? What if this semblance of safety is the difference between actual harm coming to you and you being quick-witted enough to get away. And that is a shell of a life to live. So how do we begin to build strategies and new environments and new understandings of our life after trauma? Yes, we have little T trauma. Yes, we have big T trauma. But a trauma is a trauma. You scrape your knee. That scrape is a trauma. Doesn't matter to somebody, well, I broke my leg. That's also a trauma. We're not doing trauma Olympics. Your trauma matters. My trauma matters. Shut up if you don't think it doesn't. Or you think because somebody's trauma is quote unquote smaller than yours, that it is invalid in some way. You don't know how that trauma is affecting someone else. So you don't have the right to come in and say, well, I didn't have a big problem with that. And we don't care. We do not care. So what are some techniques, some things that we can begin to build out for ourselves and a a safe enclave, if you will. To be able, in my experience, to be able to begin to 
implement those strategies and to build out that safe enclave, that safe space, that corner in your room where you are cocooned in everything that you need, you first must acknowledge that there is a problem. I was doing life on hard mode because that's how I was taught. Every woman in my family had gone through some sort of trauma, being reproductive, violence, loss, grief. And instead of sitting with themselves, even if it was just in their room, even if it was just them by themselves, not having a therapist or a counselor, even a pastor to talk to, just them. Because of that trauma, they were cut off from themselves. And any emotion that did not line up with how they thought or were even taught they were supposed to be or act out, it wasn't worth their time. You have a trauma that happened to you. So you have to always have that at the forefront of your mind. Or the other extreme, we don't have time for you to go through that because we need you to get back to the person that paid all the bills or the person that made sure the house was running correctly or the person that fixed everybody else's problems. So I come from a lineage of women who were never able to work through their problems. They just moved on. And as time went on and the scab began to form over that actual raw trauma, that was looked at as healing. It's no longer oozing blood and all these other things that are horrible for it. So that must mean I'm healed. That must mean I'm I'm good, right? And no one stopped to think that she stopped humming to herself in the kitchen, her favorite song. She no longer wears this color. She's only wearing black and white or neutrals. She used to sing in the choir and she doesn't do that anymore. She used to go to this restaurant and this was her favorite meal. And she doesn't do that anymore. And that would be looked at as, oh, well, maybe, maybe she just, you know, that's not her thing anymore. When unbeknownst to them, she has ventured into a level of depression where the things that made her happy no longer do that and before then you lose sense of self and you are desensitized to any trauma that you have after that big trauma because you line up everything to that one if I survive that one I could survive this when the option shouldn't be oh I survived it therefore I healed from it the option should be That thing fucking sucked and I need help and I need help from people who are willing to help me. That's how we discover that something is wrong. We have to go through all of those emotions. We have to go back and discover What was the first blow? It can be in childhood. It could be in your first relationship. It can be on your first job. It can be because somebody in the classroom said something to you that hit you in a way that was transformative and will stay with you for the rest of your life. But that is a trauma. And so we have to go back to that. Some people who have sexual trauma have never gone through a sexual harm. This could be just how your body responded. Our central nervous system really knows no bounds. (laughs) If something is causing alarm, they're going to throw every possible thing at it to rectify the situation. And sometimes that overcorrection can cause another thing to go wrong because our bodies are weird. And so... 
finding out what that foundation is helps us to have a better foundation moving forward. My harm was sexual. Then it became verbal. Then it became emotional. Then it became spiritual. Then it became financial. And then again, it was sexual. And these were all multiple people. This wasn't the same person. But because I didn't know how to start that healing process, I just pushed forward with no boundaries, with no understanding of what had happened and how to even start the process of reclamation, of recovery, of acknowledgement. What we do on this podcast is I share from my journey and I speak to other people who are sharing on their journeys. And we help heal ourselves. And in turn, we help others heal. We help others begin that healing path of what makes them feel something. Something they don't recognize, but they want to get to the bottom of. Here we are all about curiosity. I was a curious kid. I am a curious adult. I ask questions. And I don't care if it bothers you. I don't care if it gets on the nerves of the person that I'm asking questions about. I need to get to the bottom of this thing. One, because it, it's piquing my interest. And two, I need to know what's going on. <laughs> That's just how I am. And here I want to make sure that that space is held for the curious cats out here who want to know more who whose curiosity is constantly piqued and they finally feel that they are in a safe space to be able to explore sharing our stories or how we get over sharing our personal experiences However way we choose to is how we overcome. The worst thing that anyone that has harmed you will try to do is attempt to silence you. In silencing you, that affirms to them that what happened wasn't real. Or they have this insidious knowing that I know I did this to this person and they're never going to talk about it. They're never going to let anyone else know about it. And if what happens happens the way that I want it to, they will begin to blame themselves. And then I'm off the hook. Sharing is your artillery. Sharing is your strongest weapon. There are going to be people that will attempt to side eye or cut your story off at the knees. They will try to place themselves in those situations and say, well, I would have did this. They will attempt to make this a non-factor and a non-story or because multiple people have gone through it. What makes you special? You are special. And this is a safe and non-judgmental space for survivors like us to reclaim our stories, to reclaim our narratives. So season one of this podcast, you will get stories of triumph over trauma, reclaiming pleasure after trauma, knowing and affirming that pleasure is your birthright. We're here as adults. And the one thing that we make sure outside of being adults is that everyone here is consenting. I'm not here to yuck anybody's yum. I'm here to actually talk about mine. And that's how we break the stigmas and create room for us to enjoy the things that make us happy, tingly, feel good. That's why we're here. We're here to experience this life beyond religion, beyond what has happened to us beyond the things that we have done. We're here to experience pleasure in this life that goes beyond the physical. And I hope you join me on this journey. Mm-hmm.